and welcome to this program. Japan is undergoing many social and economic changes. First among them is a rapidly declining population due to falling birth rates and aging. This two-part series looks at how the country is planning to move forward and sustain economic growth by drawing on the maximum potential of working women, senior citizens and foreigners. These solutions could serve as examples for other advanced countries around the world that face the same social changes. This first episode describes the present situation of major changes in working conditions for women, as well as tasks for the future. Today, we have two special guests joining our program. Hello, gentlemen. Uh, let me first introduce Jasper Cole, who has been researching and investing in Japan since 1985 and works as chief economist. And then Nicholas Benish. He is a former investment banker and an expert on corporate governance, and he has lived in Japan for over 30 years. Right? So, as far as I know, you two have been living in Japan for over 30 years, have long experiences professionally, and as we have family in Japan. Yeah. So, um, to get to the bottom of the story, I would like to ask your general impression of Japanese working women. Yes, Look, sir? From an, from an economist's perspective, Japanese women are a greatly underutilized asset. Mm -hmm. And that is the case both in terms of quantity as well as in terms of quantity, uh, quality. So quantitatively, you know, raising the participation rates as well as qualitatively giving greater job responsibility to females could easily raise Japan's GDP by one, one and a half percentage points every year. Now, most women, uh, a lot of women at the age of having the first child think, would I like to come back to my mm -hmm. a job, to, to my present job? And they may not do it, but they think a lot more about it than they did in the past when it was not expected. Now then, let's take a look at some measures taken by companies to deal with workplace situations and promote the new style of Japanese working woman. Shiseido's business operates in about 120 countries and regions and deals mainly with cosmetics products. This is a company where many female employees play active roles. This is Mikiko Soejima. She's a chief beauty officer. She's amassed experience at the front line of sales and business transactions. My confidence is based on hands-on experience working at sales sites like shops. I have experienced a variety of situations, but after all, the most important experience has been direct contact with customers. Ms. Soejima started working for Shiseido after she graduated from high school. Her work as a beauty consultant on the shop floor was very impressive, and she was promoted to executive officer. When I entered this company, Shiseido was still a male-dominated environment. In those days, most female workers quit when they got married and had children. In comparison, now there are very few workers, including bosses, who expect female workers to quit working due to marriage and children. It has become widely recognized that female workers will keep working for the company. The vitality of female employees is key to the development of this business, because most of their customers are women. Shiseido was among the first to establish a system to keep female employees working for the company. As an unexpected consequence, a new problem arose. Too much consideration was being given to women who took time off for child care. When a female employee needed time off for child care, she was exempted from working evenings as well as on weekends and holidays. However, we have more customers on evenings and weekends. So, exemption from these peak times means workers lose opportunities to get experience to build their skills and grow. We decided to interview each worker who was exempted from nights or weekends 
to see if she would benefit from family or childcare facilities. Then we moved ahead by considering work exemptions on an employee to employee basis. Shiseido has propelled women into the working environment. The company's attitude was highly regarded, and Shiseido was awarded the Cabinet Office's first ministerial award for women empowering companies 2014. As of January 2017, 30% of all domestic managers were female. Shiseido is creating an organized climate for female leaders to achieve success. I think at Shiseido, there is an environment that allows me to keep working during the period of child raising, which I like a lot. Since the reformation, there is also an improved environment where women can build their careers while taking care of children. I believe this working environment is a place where we women can keep succeeding. Many companies in Japan are still struggling to support the balance of working and childcare. So the people concerned in those companies are trying to reform the system of compatibility between working and childcare. But simple compatibility does not offer female workers a way to build their careers. Therefore, finding proactive ways to give female employees chances to build their careers might be a big wall some companies must scale. In this sense, I recognize that Shiseido as a company is a role model. I think this is absolutely incredible because it gives the younger employees, right, a role model, something to aspire to, that you can actually have a career if you want to. Right. You know, in the past, one of the issues here in Japan is that most women felt, uh, I don't think Japanese women are particularly strong in feeling a, a high sense of responsibility to being a homemaker once right. they get married and they have a child and they have a high standard for that. Uh, and, and it was felt that a sort of this self-imposed sense of duty that your job as a homemaker was to set up what, was, what they even say in Japanese was an aircraft carrier for your husband to come home to. He was the fighter pilot who was out fighting all the time, came in for a quick pit stop and then went out for another battle. Mm -hmm. So you were supposed to be at home and you enabled him to do that. And so for Japanese women to sort of wake up and say, hey, I want to go back to my career and let's mm -hmm. split the work with the husband is a real change in society. But that's happening at Shiseido. So um, I would like to move on to the, the government's effort now. Uh, the Abe administration has passed a uh, women's empowerment law in 2015, which presses on major Japanese companies to hire and promote more women. Do you think such efforts could make real differences? I think it, it really it already has. It has made a difference because uh, what the law does is it essentially says that any uh, company with more than 300 employees must disclose to their employees, but also to the public, uh, fundamental numbers and statistics uh, or aspects of their practices for uh, employment, particularly regarding women. You know, the number of women you have, their, the length of their employment with the company, the number of directors who are female, uh, the disparity in income, this kind of thing. And the, uh, the, this is a, a culture of uh, a shame-based society where if you, based on this law, are not in one of the higher ranks of you know, what's deemed to be good practice, you're embarrassed. If you are in one of the higher ranks, they have sort of criteria grades that you, you get if you have a good policy, uh, you're more uh, eligible for uh, government procurement uh, or subsidies and that sort of thing. And so not being in those higher ranks in terms of the grading uh, is embarrassing to companies and is leading them to consider which the law requires, uh, in improving their action plans mm -hmm. for utilizing women more in their workforce. 
for uh, companies that don't comply to these codes that are not the best in class, they will start to have huge problems actually recruiting. Mm -hmm. And as the labor force, as the number of high school and university graduates goes down, the war for talent is mm -hmm. going to intensify tremendously in Japan. And if you're not best practice on the women empowerment front, you're not going to get the graduates, you're not going to get the workforce that you want. Mm -hmm. Looking at a graph showing female employment rates, the rate of working women in their 30s and 40s decreases like the letter M. In recent years, however, Japan's female employment rate has gradually been increasing and finally, in 2015, reached 71.1% and surpassed that of the United States. Through such social changes, a variety of services are created to support women in the workplace. Next up, we direct our attention to a woman who conceived of a way to support working women with housework and childcare. She established an enterprise to help women take more active roles. This is a company called Taskaji. The company runs a platform for matching private households with independent housekeepers. Taskaji founder Sachiko Wada has one child. What inspired her to become an entrepreneur? There weren't enough people to do housework in our family because both my husband and I were working. At that time, I learned that we could make a contract with an individual housekeeper on our own. I found a very nice worker on the internet, and our lives totally changed. I wanted to share this experience with families that were having trouble with housework because both husbands and wives were working. That was the opportunity to provide this service. In Japan, there's a strong belief that housework is supposed to be done by wives. And many women tend to feel guilty asking for outside help with housework. Ms. Wada found an angle to ease that reluctance. When I first undertook the enterprise of offering this service, I asked many foreigners to register themselves, since many of them could speak good English. I thought that the added value for client families would be the cross-cultural experiences that these foreign workers would provide, such as English conversation with the children and foreign foods. I wanted to help women get over their feelings of guilt in outsourcing housework by changing their viewpoint to see that it is a good thing for their children's education. I wanted people to see it as finding partners without the need to feel guilty. Ms. Wada coined the name Taskaji to give her housekeepers a friendly image. There are two popular appeals for users. It's easy to make a booking using the internet. And reviews of Taskaji workers are included in the site, so users can select a housekeeper who most appeals to them. This family has three children, and both parents are working. They first started using the Taskaji service one and a half years ago. I felt so relieved when I asked for help with housework about once a week. Even though it's just work, the relationship with people is very important, and the person I asked had a very good personality. She not only helped with housework, but also cared for my children and spoke English with them. I really enjoyed having those extra services provided. The Tuskaji fees start from about 13 US dollars per hour. The charges are affordable for ordinary families. As the rating of a Tuskaji worker goes up, however, the fee increases. Under this system, Tuskaji workers can fulfill their ambitions and gain a sense of self-fulfillment. It's very good that I can work at my own pace. I feel touched when reading their review comments. 
As I read the reviews with my own child, I tell him, Look, mom finally found a way to help people. The number of Toskaji users rose to 8,000 two years after the services were first offered. And there are now 400 registered Toskaji workers. I believe one of its many merits is that it encourages women to be more positive toward their work by relieving them from the responsibility of housework. Women will improve their skills and build their careers as they are released from the burden of housework. I'd like to create a society where people who have problems with housework can be fully supported by the people around them, including Tuskaji workers. If Tuskaji could be a part of that, it would be great. You know, I can personally really, really relate to this new business because um, up until now, I've always felt that I'm rather westernized Japanese. But it is the time when I went back to work when my daughter turned seven month old. And um, I was a working mom, taking care of my child, and had to clean up the, the entire house after I came home with, over the weekends. And then I was so exhausted. But it never crossed my mind that I could ask for an outside help, and that's when I realized how Japanese I was at the core. This sense of guilt that Japanese working moms feel to ask for help. Now that the environment uh, in Japan is changing, now that the mindset of women and the mindset of men is actually changing and women feel more empowered, mm -hmm. All of a sudden then you have this entrepreneurship, right? You create the supply so that you actually do have, you know, sort of a very, very easy booking system, exactly. right? Um, and there's full transparency on the whole mm -hmm. thing. And, you know, it's a virtuous cycle that is coming into play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, the, uh, it, the changes are very uh, great in the context of the last few years. My daughter is using services like this. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, she's Japanese, mm -hmm. uh, mainly. Uh, the uh, thing I recall is, uh, I can say from personal experience, my, my wife is Japanese, it is very difficult, actually, to convince uh, a person close to you mm -hmm. to hire a maid or a home helper in Japan if she feels very responsible and wants to do things her way in her home and has been trained that way from birth. Her mother never hired a home helper. It's not a custom in Japan. So mm -hmm. we're talking about a major cultural change mm -hmm. taking place here that, as Jesper says, requires uh, not all the attitudes of men, but of women themselves, mm -hmm. that it's okay to think this way, to do this. To... Next up, many heavy industry companies that deal with electric power or railway vehicles have a strong male image. Some of them are trying to shatter the glass ceiling by appointing women as senior managers and directors. Among those women, we focus on one who became the first female director in the company's history. This is Hitachi Limited. Hitachi Limited was established in 1910 and has a 107 year history as a global heavy industry manufacturer. Yukiko Araki was Hitachi's first female executive. Mezuraki started working in central government after she graduated from university. She was the first member of the ministry to be granted childcare leave and built her career as she raised two children. After 30 years working in government, she started working for Hitachi Limited in 2012. When my children were young, it would have been difficult to try to do everything by myself. First, my husband helped me, and then my parents, as well as my sister and my neighbors. Then, when my children started going to school, other kids' mothers offered to help me. It's like everybody I knew helped me to get where I am today. Mizuraki says that women's success is indispensable for a business's global development and ability to take a place among the world's leading enterprises. Decision-making is more effective among people from different backgrounds than among like-minded people. And by different backgrounds, I don't mean only male and female. 
But the breadth of ideas expands if at least more female workers participate in decision-making. I believe that kind of thing also leads to innovation. Better decision-making by both male and female workers is the most important thing for management, I think. Since 2013, female managers in domestic group offices have gathered for annual meetings to exchange ideas and opinions on leadership at Hitachi. In addition, they undertake activities related to promoting diversity and talk about relevant tasks. Satoko Fujimori is director of the Information Systems Division. How does she feel about Hitachi's activities? I don't think there used to be many opportunities to talk about my career and future with female colleagues, but now I'm very glad that I finally have a group to talk about those issues. I feel that compared to men, women can be more frank when speaking to management or their bosses, so women can communicate in a straightforward manner. It's easier for them to speak out. At Hitachi, our goal is to reach 1,000 female executives by 2020. Since that goal was set, it seems that many employees are wondering whether it is possible to reach it. I can actually feel that more and more people come to recognize that it is very natural to appoint women to more responsible positions. It is because management has strived towards a concrete goal. I think we'll make it. So that was the case of Hitachi, one of Japan's leading industrial conglomerates, uh, incorporating more women into their core part of businesses as well as higher up in their company. Um, what, what is your take on the, their move? I mean, this is absolutely key. I mean, from an investor's perspective, right, there is more and more academic research that is being done that proves a positive correlation between female empowerment to senior positions and corporate productivity, corporate profitability, and a very positive correlation even with the share price. So it's very, very important. Again, Japan must improve productivity. Productivity in Japan is very low compared to other advanced industrial economies. By increasing diversity, by empowering females, uh, you know, empirically, the probability of Japan's productivity going up, the return on equity, the return on assets actually increasing, that probability improves very, very strongly. So empowering women, encouraging them to break through the glass ceiling, that's how Japan is going to become an economic powerhouse in the future. That Japan is the country in the world that has the most upside potential from diversity, far and away. If you want to invest long term in the beneficial effects of diversity on productivity, ROA, ROE, et cetera, in an economy, this is the place to do it because it lacks so far so little diversity. But minds have suddenly changed over the last five years. No, this is, look, I mean, you know, the fact that you're behind always gives you great upside potential here. At the same time, of course, you know, everybody knows this around all the global competitors. So it's the race, you know, right. the competitive race globally is a very vicious one. Right. In the point of Japan, in the case of Japan, what matters is success models, you know? I mean, just pursuing diversity for diversity's sake is not gonna get you anywhere. And the Japanese are very empirical, right? They observe very, very carefully. Right. Now that we've got some leading Japanese companies, you know, actually having diverse board of directors, and those companies over the next couple of years, as they begin to differentiate themselves, to pull ahead of the competition, the other companies are gonna follow and say, well, maybe part of the reason is that they are not male-dominated, you know, escalator success type companies, but they're actually diverse companies that empower individuals, whether they're foreigners, whether they're women, you know, whatever it is, right? Nothing is going to succeed like success, and Japan is just starting out right now. Well, let's hope for the better. Okay.
there haven't been many opportunities for women to take active roles in society in Japan compared with other countries. But recently, a breeding ground for women to play such important roles seems to be growing. At present, the Japanese government is hosting WILL, a project to nurture the next generation of female leaders. Participants from various companies gain the knowledge necessary for corporate managers and build networks. It's absolutely essential that women empowerment, you know, uh, gets greater and greater attention here. I mean, it's half of the Japanese population. It's half of the workforce. Use that asset wisely, both in terms of empowerment from a quantitative perspective, raising the female participation rate, but also, and more importantly, from a qualitative perspective, empower women to actually have leadership positions, because that way, the men are going to be kept on their toes, and that is exactly what increases overall productivity. Right, exactly. It's, it's very interesting. I mean, I spend, you know, my day job is to talk to global investors. And when they ask, you know, is Abenomics working? What reforms are actually being done? Womenomics is the easiest one to actually show that there has been a fundamental change. Mm -hmm. You are seeing it with the participation rates actually increasing very nicely. You are seeing it with more and more visibility of uh, Japanese females rising up uh, in the corporate hierarchy. Uh, in the corporate hierarchy. The, uh, I mean, as, as Jasper just said, in the last three, four years, you've seen a acceleration, and then now an even faster acceleration in the amount of discussion and debate about this topic. You know, really not a day goes by without you seeing an article or a, a news program or some television program on the topic of how to utilize women in the workforce more. So Jasper Cole and Nicholas Benes, thank you so much for joining us today. Next time, we will continue with a look at how senior citizens and foreigners are taking active roles and in supporting the movement of Japan's economy. <laughs>